So this video is part of the series of behavioral economics videos uh, looking at different concepts and how they might influence the decision making of economic agents. So when we're looking at behavioral economics, what we have to consider is um, how we can incorporate the study of psychology into the analysis of the decision making behind an economic outcome. And what we're um, considering is, is why consumers and other economic agents may sometimes act in an irrational manner when making decisions. And this specific video is going to be looking at the framing effect. Now, obviously, when an economic agent has to make a decision, they have to obviously process and evaluate the information. Now, whilst processing and evaluating that information, it can take time and energy. And often what economic agents might do is try to make the process uh, as, as quick and efficient as possible and how they do that is by using shortcuts or heuristics. Now the availability and effect of heuristics may contribute towards the framing effect. So what is the framing effect? Well the framing effect is simply how choices can be presented and when choices are presented in a certain way it can highlight the positive or negative aspects of the, ex the exact same decision. So it leads to changes in their relative attractiveness. Now, equivalent information can be more or less attractive depending on what features are highlighted. So the framing effects can have a considerable influence on public opinion. And it's probably, even without you realising, it's probably influenced the decision that you've made on a day-to-day -day basis. So if we, for example, think about going to the supermarket, you're going down to the aisles, you're thinking about what products to buy, you might go to get some, um, some yoghurt, and um, straight away you're looking at the packaging. Now, the framing effect it can influence you by how the packaging has been designed. So if you've got these two products, they're pretty much exactly the same product, but one says it contains 20% fat, whilst the other one is 80% fat free. Which one are you going to pick? The likelihood is you are going to pick the one on the right, the 80% fat free, because it, look, it seems more attractive because that 80% is a significant and large number suggesting how much of it is fat free. But actually, in reality, they're the exact same product. Now, when we're talking about framing, so a frame, the reason why it's called framing is if you think about a frame itself, a frame focuses attention on the painting it surrounds. So if you get a painting and you add different frames to that painting, it will draw out different aspects of the work. So for example, if you put a painting in a red frame, it'll bring out the red in the piece. If you put the same painting in a blue frame, it'll bring out, again, different aspects such as the blue. And that will straight away influence what you think about that painting. So consumer choice will be influenced by how information is presented to them. Framing is the essence of targeting a communication to a specific audience. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you an example of a framing experiment by a behavioural economist carrying out research on behalf of a financial firm. And it was just to do with a choice that he... Um, presented to individuals uh, regarding retirement. So uh, I'll play the video now and then I'll give you some more examples of framing. We react to a particular choice in different ways depending on how it's presented. We call that the framing effect. It's one of the many behaviours which affect our ability to invest wisely. We went to Bronte Beach and asked the locals two questions. Do you think you could retire on 70% of your current income. If you say yes, put it here. If no, there. Oh, I think, think yes. yes. Here. Yes, I do. Yeah, I think I probably could. Why did you pick no? Because I'm not working at the moment. <laughs> you picked yes. Could you tell us why? Wouldn't be spending as much money as what I'm spending now. I just don't think I'll be doing as much stuff in my retirement, so I won't need as much cash. I would sustain a good lifestyle based on how much I spend. Just uh, playing golf, surfing, relaxing. We then ask them the same question in a different way. Do you think that you could retire on a 30% reduction of your current income? Could I survive on a 30% reduction in my income? This is yes, this is no. <laughs> no. 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 Who said yes? <laughs> Can I put three shovels? No. Could you tell us a bit more why you said no? You know, I, quite simply, we wouldn't have enough money to live. There is no way I could sustain my current lifestyle. I need all that I can get now. Well, 30% of nothing's pretty. <laughs> we react to a particular choice in different ways, depending on how it's presented. It is great to think positively, 
but let's consider our opinion from all angles. That way, we can be truly content with our choices. That's why it's important to talk to the experts. So again, you, from the video, you can see how uh, people's perceptions or people's uh, understanding or how they um, assess the information that's provided and evaluate that information it can be manipulated, it can be influenced just by how the, the question is presented or how the information is presented. So if we think about it from this point of view, we've got program A and we've got program B. Now, if we're looking at program A, it saves 200 lives. That's the positive way it could be presented. Or the negative could be 400 people will die. If we think about program B, the positive is a 33% chance of saving all 600 people or 66% possibility of saving no one. Or what you could say is a 33% chance that no people will die. However, 66% probability that all 600 will die. And it's just how you present that information and what you're trying to um, achieve from that uh, presentation of information. If, for example, you're trying to persuade um, individuals into making a certain decision, then you may frame it in a positive way. Um, so they obviously absorb that. And when they're carrying out those heuristics and they're thinking about how they can evaluate the information that's been given to make a decision, they're easily influenced by the positiveness of how it's been presented. And this was uh, seen, for example, in the 2015 um, Greek referendum with regards to uh, whether they should accept the bill out or not. Now, this um, there's a lot of uh, information on this on social media because there was accusations that the ballot paper was designed in such a way which related to framing. So um, translated into English, we've got the referendum uh, of 5th of July 2015. And after uh, people had voted, people uh, turned to their smartphones and uh, to social media to kind of complain about how confusing the ballot paper was and how the choices were presented to those who were obviously um, participated in the referendum. So uh, this was one example where voters go to the polls for the Greek referendum, meaning they just found the information very, very difficult to understand, uh, again, because of how it was presented. Uh, there's this one where it says, um, if if you select a no, then obviously the no is in, um, in capitals, in a larger font with a bigger box to tick, um, suggesting that the information on the ballot paper was trying to get you to to pretty much select no and again Greek referendum ballot question would uh, it be clearer if it was phrased as do you want to leave the EU yes if no no if yes so um, we can see it from the government we can see it from private firms but often when information is presented to an economic agent uh, you do want to question how is that information being presented and could framing be taking place to try to influence how you absorb, how you assess, how you evaluate that information that's being presented.